Let's talk about the ratio test for series convergence. As usual, we're starting out with a sum of terms in the series defined by an expression a sub n. And that series has to be with non-zero terms. So we have three possibilities. That series converges absolutely if the limit of the ratio of the a sub n plus 1 over a sub n as n approaches infinity is less than 1. OK? And it's the absolute value of that ratio. This series diverges if the limit of that ratio is greater than 1 or if it equals infinity. And if it equals 1, we can't make any conclusion. It might diverge. It might converge. We'll just have to use a different test. Now, this test works especially well for series that converge rapidly, such that ones that involve exponentials or factorials. Let's do a couple of examples. OK, so I've got an exponential and a factorial. This one ought to be a pretty good candidate for the ratio test. To start off, let me write out what a sub n plus 1 is. That's going to be 3 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. So to test for convergence, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1. That's what we just figured out. over a sub n. Now that's kind of awkward to write. So remember that when I'm dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by its reciprocal. So let's rewrite this like this. The limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times the reciprocal, that denominator. So it's going to be n factorial over 3 to the n. And that's easier to work with, because watch what happens. That's going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, 3 raised to the n plus 1 power divided by 3 raised to the n power. I'm dividing, so that means I'm going to subtract exponents. And that leaves me with 3 to the first power. What about these factorials? Well, n factorial, let's uh, recall here, guys, that n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way out to n. And n plus 1 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way out to n times n plus 1. And if I'm dividing all of these by all of these, that means 1 through n multiplied together is going to cancel. And all I have left is n plus 1. I'll go back to blue here. So this is an easy limit to take. The limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n plus 1 is 0. OK, well, if this limit of this ratio is less than 1, which ours is, we know it converges absolutely. So we've just proven that this series converges. Let's do another one. OK, so here I've got an alternating series. Negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 times 3 halves to the n over n squared. I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. And this is important to remember. I'm doing the absolute value, so guess what? That negative 1 to the n minus 1 doesn't matter anymore, because the absolute value is all we're worried about, which is going to make everything positive. So that's going to be 3 halves to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. That's my a sub n plus 1 term times, 
I'm going to do, multiply it by the reciprocal of the a sub n. So that's going to be times n squared over 3 halves to the n. OK, let's simplify this. That's the limit as n approaches infinity. OK, so I have 3 halves to the n plus 1 divided by 3 halves to the n. I'm going to subtract my exponents. That leaves me with 3 halves to the first power times n squared. I'm going to multiply this out. That's going to give me n squared plus 2n plus 1. And if I have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom, and I'm taking the limit as n approaches infinity, and it's the same degree, top and bottom, then all I have to worry about is my lead coefficient right there. So this whole thing equals 3 halves. All right, what does that mean? That's greater than 1. And so if the ratio is greater than 1, the test for the series says that it diverges. So this series, what, what am I thinking about here? This series diverges. OK? Now, if you work out the ratio test and you get it exactly equal to 1, remember it's inconclusive and you have to try another test to see if you can figure out if it converges or diverges. And that's pretty much it for applying the ratio test for series convergence.